Okay, so with these six test cases that we have kind of automated, we might be feeling proud that we could very quickly put up a test suite. But the challenge is, let's say tomorrow, password fields ID changes. Now if that changes, what we have to do is, we have to go and update it at every place. Even though we can use a find replace, but still we need to make this change at multiple places. Because still, till now what we have done is we have made copy of this function within the same file. But it is possible that we might have copied this function into some other file in case the project becomes bigger. So this is a bad thing that we are not doing the code reuse and we are having a lot of duplicates. So the problems with this approach is our lot of duplication is there, maintenance effort is involved and going forward if we have to automate one more test case then we know we have to make a copy of this function and we have to make necessary changes for that particular test case. Now this makes a need for one category of test which is called data driven test. Now data driven test is kind of one test case which can be run again and again with different data values. So only thing that changes in the test case is the data values. And in our example the data values are username and password. So we will take a look at what is the better way to organize this test and say that we are making them data driven. Let's go ahead and add one more file here and we say these are data driven login tests. So this is a positive test. What this test will do is it will take a username, this will take a password and we know in this the result we are expecting is true. So what we do is rather than saying the send keys we say username and then we say password. Now who will pass this username and password? That's the data driven feature of XUnit. So what we can do is, in case we want to write a test which is data driven, first thing we have to modify is the fact should be made theory. After we have made it theory, next thing we should do is, we should write an attribute called in date, inline data and this should know the valid username and password. So in our this example and another example, the two valid username and passwords are these, so we will copy that, so we will say first valid username is this and the first valid password that we had is this. So test username and test password. So this is the first test data with which we should be running the test. Second test data we can again write inline data and this time we know the only thing changes is at the rate gmail.com. And tomorrow imagine if we have to add two more uh, username and passwords then this can be extended it's just like copy of this line same way if we have to automate the another test case which is the negative test scenario then other four scenarios that we talked about they should be able to run exactly from here so we can call this as negative